Design Jet how to use video series. In this episode, I will show you how to navigate the front panel. The front panel is used to perform certain operations, such as loading and unloading media. It displays up-to-date information about the status of the printer, the ink cartridges, the print heads, the maintenance cartridge, the paper, the print jobs, and other parts and processes. It provides guidance on using the printer utilizing animations. It displays warnings and error messages, and it can be used to change the values of the printer settings and allows you to operate the printer. Now, let's take a closer look. The front panel has the following components starting with the four direct access keys on the left hand side. The media loading key starts the media loading process. The view media information key displays information about the loaded media such as media type and the amount of linear feet left on the roll. The pause printing key pauses printing after finishing the current page. Press the key again to restart printing. This can be useful, for instance, when you want to change the role of media between prints. The form, feed, and cut key is pressed when you want to advance and cut the media. The front panel display shows errors, warnings, and information on using your printer. The back key allows you to go to the previous step in a procedure or interaction. It also allows you to go to the upper level or leave the option in a menu or when given an option. The menu key is used to return to the main menu of the front panel display. If you are already on the main menu, it will display the status screen. The down key is used to go down in a menu or option or to decrease a value, for example when configuring the front panel display contrast or the IP address. The power key is used to turn the printer on or off. It also has a light to indicate the printer's status. If the power key light is off, the printer is off. If the power key light is blinking green, the printer is starting up. If the power key light is green, the printer is on. If the power key light is amber, the printer is in standby mode. If the power key light is blinking amber, the printer requires attention. The cancel key is used to abort a procedure or interaction. The up key is used to go up in a menu or option or to increase a value, for example when configuring the front panel display contrast or the IP address. The OK key is used to confirm an action while in a procedure or interaction. It will also allow you to enter a submenu from within a menu. It will confirm a value when given an option. If the status screen is displayed, this key takes you to the main menu. The status light indicates the printer's status. If the status light is solid green, the printer is ready. If it is flashing green, the printer is busy. If it is solid amber, there is a system error. If it is flashing amber, the printer requires attention. This is the status screen. This is the main menu screen. As you can see, there are several icons. Each icon represents a menu that has several submenus to perform tasks or see information about the printer. To navigate the menu, use the up and down keys, the OK key, and the back key. The first menu that I will access is the paper menu. This allows you to initiate the paper loading and unloading process, view the loaded paper type, change the active paper type, move the paper forwards or backwards, and enables the take up reel. The next menu is the job management menu. This is very handy. It allows you to reprint the last job, pause or resume printing, and access the job queue. From within the job queue, you can reprint old jobs, continue print jobs that are on hold, and cancel print jobs or move a print job up in the queue. We now move to the ink menu. This allows you to view ink levels, view the print head status, begin the process of replacing ink cartridges, begin the process of replacing the print heads, begin the process of replacing the maintenance cartridge. You can also view ink cartridge, print head, and maintenance cartridge information such as warranty status and part numbers. The setup menu is one that you will need to become familiar with. This allows you to set the graphics language, select the default print quality, select the color options such as print only in color or grayscale, and select rendering intent and HP Pantone emulation. You can also access paper options such as paper size, remove top and bottom blank areas from the print job, resize, enable mirror image, and crop lines. You can set margins in this menu. 
This is also where you can select HPGL2 and PostScript options. You will also need to ensure that you select the correct altitude where this printer will operate. This affects the vacuum system strength in holding the paper flat to the platen. You will set print retrieval options such as drying time and turning the cutter on and off here. The job management submenu allows you to turn the queue on and off, set the default when the print job should start to print, you can enable nesting and tell the printer to auto-rotate print jobs to save paper. All of the front panel options are set here as well. The language, display contrast, measurement units, setting the date and time, enabling the sleep mode and sleep mode wait time is also set here. You can restore the printer back to factory defaults in this menu. And lastly, you can access and control accessories. The image quality maintenance menu is also important. This menu is where you will perform calibrations, print head alignments, print head cleanings, and print diagnostic images. If you are having image quality issues, you will use the tools located here to address and fix them. In addition, the embedded web server in the printer, which is accessed through Internet Explorer, provides step-by-step -step guides on which tools to use from this menu to address print quality issues. The connectivity menu is usually only accessed during the initial setup or if the printer is moved. This allows you to set up the connection to the onboard gigabit ethernet port or a JetDirect card if you have installed it. In addition, you can allow SNMP and allow access to the embedded web server and restore the printer to factory settings. The next menu is the internal prints. There are several demo files that users can print to test the color and print quality. In addition, this is where you access user information prints such as the menu map, configuration information, print the HPGL2 palette, and the PostScript font list. If for some reason you have to contact HP support, you will be asked to access this menu to provide information such as usage information, event logs, calibration status, and the connectivity configuration. The last menu is the information menu. You would access this menu to look at system errors, system warnings, ink cartridge and print head information such as warranty status and calibration status. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more in-depth product information, I recommend that you refer to the user's manual which shipped with your printer on a CD. Or you can download it at hp.com under the support tab.